And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We're in the Marty 1090 studios with... Captain Tim X from Fresh Off the Royal Star. We're going to be talking some fishing here. Talking tuna. Stay tuned. Southern California Sport Fishing Voices. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 10 Night. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half three-quarter and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at SeaforthLanding.com. My angler H to Earth. Like the mighty flounder, I will keep one eye on the pole and the other watching for rogue waves. I'll save water by taking shorter showers and enthusiastically celebrate talk like a pirate day. I... I will chat up the locals before launching in unfamiliar waters. And I will always, always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O's? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360 degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. What a great show today, man. Indeed. Captain Tim Ekstrom is here from the Royal Star. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Great to have you. Fresh off the boat yesterday. And uh, what's going on out there? I have the uh, the on the water perspective, but Perfect. <laughs> yeah, none more do. so than Ricky here, who's been out there every yeah, day well, he possibly you know. can be, and and just about every other local uh, boater. This has been is this the year of the private boater? Oh uh, yeah, this is it, man. it's pretty incredible. It really is. I mean, we've had phenomenal fishing too in a lot of different places, but I, I just cannot believe how consistent the opportunities at good sized fish. That's the real difference here this year is that it, this is the quality that's yeah. available in local, local waters here. I know, I'm, and it's no. Uh, it, it, it's 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 no newsflash. I mean, the best quality tuna on the coast right now has been here local, anywhere from 
you know, 10 miles <laughs> off the beach so to rad. 40 and 50 miles, enough so that, that a lot of long-range boats, us included, on the back end of our trip, if we still are looking for some kind of tuna or opportunity of tuna that's, that's good size, you know, 25, 30 pounds or better, we've been finishing our, our trips up here. Yeah, I can't tell you how cool it is to – to be out there cruising around, you know, wherever, off of Carlsbad, catching tuna, and like, whoop, there goes, there goes, there goes Tim and the boys, you know, on, on, on a on a sideways in a drift with half the boat pulling on thirty pounders, you know, yeah, at, at home. Right, and it's good fishing. That's, exactly, I mean, we wouldn't be up here if it wasn't. That, that's oh. the whole key to it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. 30 exactly, to like sixty pounders, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, some a lot of good ones yeah, mixed in. That boat goes where the very best fishing is. Period. I mean, per- n- nothing else. And if the very best fishing is there, you're going to wake up and see the Royal Star, and it's pretty cool as a private boater to, to see that going on it's like well they, they go to wherever it is best whether that means it's here or you know 400 miles from here that boat's going to be where it is best and it's pretty cool to see that best is in our backyard so let me ask you this uh typically for us here in southern california september october the best the best is yet to come is the best yet to come or are I, we seeing the I, I would suspect yeah yeah I, I really think so i mean we haven't even seen this you know the big El Nino push that's being forecast. We ha- really haven't seen that down below yet. It's just kind of we're starting to see signs of it now. Farther down the coast, water temps in the you know 78, 76 to 80 degree range, 82 degrees down on the ridge, and that that water is starting to push up. We saw water that was in like 75, just above Benitas last wow. trip. But there's still there's tons of water from say here to. 220, 230 miles south, there's tons of water in the 71 degree range, 69, 72, and even offshore here, it's, you know, on a hot day when it's calm, it gets up to 74, 75 surface warming, but but most of it is 72, 73, that's not really all that, that's not it's above not super average. uncommon. It's, it's yeah. not, it's not above average, not for this time of year, so. But, so you I, think it's, it's coming? Oh, absolutely, I think yeah. the big push, you know, if it's going to happen, and, you know. How that is? I, I'm not. I'm not the oceanographer. Even yeah. those guys don't know. You know, yeah. but the but, educated and, guess, right? Yeah, the educated guess is that it's going to happen, and, and and we see all the signs. I mean, we're all seeing it. We see the 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 small school size tuna. They were here in June. The, you know, the Dorado were here. Now we're starting to see that sign of Wahoo. <clears throat> I know there's been some Wahoo on kelps around here local, but we got that one in that kelp that was 150 miles south of here, and and on a the, the you, got a, you got a Wahoo 150 miles south of here? Yeah, a 72-pounder, a big one. Whoa, yeah. cool a nice one. Yeah, we got snipped off by a couple, too. And then yeah. and there's been a couple other guys down there who, who picked them up, too, yeah. trolling or just stopped on kelps. So those things are coming. I, and, and, and I think that if if this thing goes like we've seen in years past and, and, and like they're forecasting, I would say October is just going to be off the scale so and it's going to go into it's going to be just like last year it's going to go into november you know yeah. december I, I would expect that so oh. typically you're doing 10 day trips by october right wahoo big tuna down on the ridge well that would be the you know the standard for that yeah. time of year if it was a normal year if there's any such thing in, anymore you know the world is in itself but fishing as we know is pretty dynamic so i yeah. hesitate to use that term but we actually you know, we saw this thing coming, and, and, and last year, it, it's not that it, it, it took some, you know, sage clairvoyant to figure that out. I and mean, it was, it was this, this thing has been set, it was setting up last year. So we actually adjusted our schedule in October. We had a, uh, we had an eight-day trip that was kind of faltering, and I don't think we were the only ones that figured it out also. You know, there's a lot of anglers out there going, well, I go on an eight-day. I can go on a three-day out here, a four-day, whatever. <laughs> Seriously. So we had one that was kind of faltering. We lost a couple guys, so we scrubbed it, and we scheduled – we actually had an opportunity for to, uh, to to host a two day charter, which we took, and then we threw another day and a half in there and a three day. Whoa! Which is at the beginning of uh, the beginning of October. I think oh. the, the dates of that day and a half are the seventh through the ninth. And Probably the, sold out already. The day, the three day did. Yeah. It was over. The, it's over Columbus Day weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, leave on a Friday, get back on a Monday, pretty much. Day and a half still has spots? The day and a half, I believe it did. Wow. I believe well, it does. Well, the I cool thing, it, the new website, the possibly. But the new what website, a, uh, you can book right online now. That's right. That's yeah. right. And it's been working out great. But, you know, it was, a, it was a big transition. Oh, yeah. You know, we've been doing it the same way, and God love Tracy. She's incredible. She's absolutely, I mean, there's no, yeah. not enough good accolades I can extend her way. She's she's phenomenal. But we've been doing it the same way for so long. You know, switching over to the new system, I, I likened it to turning the Titanic. You know, yeah. it took some time, you know, <laughs> sure. a year and a half, if you will. But that's all right. It's a great new system. We love it. It's it's it's, it's new to Royal Star. Some of the other rigs have been using it as well. And and uh, we I, I, I everything about that system I really 
it, it's a big improvement. You know, we, we stepped into the 21st century. Oh, so. absolutely. And it's probably it, making Tracy's job a lot smoother. It, it will. It, yeah. it absolutely will. You know, in the end, no question about it. Um, but anyway, you do that day and a half. And, and, and also, at the end of October, if you guys look at our schedule, you'll see, and this has been on the schedule for a long time, we put two five days in. Nice. It's like the 20th through the 25th and the 25th through the, through the 33rd, or roughly in that time frame. I think the, the second one actually gets in November 1st, prime time. Oh, yeah. It's going to no be doubt. prime time. Where could you days. go on a five-day? Well, you go anywhere between here and, I mean, you can fish down on the coast as far as Hippolito or Sunshine if, oh, you, if you want. You can go out, out west, you offshore. Find some every, kelps loaded with, uh, with Wahoo. With Wahoo and Dorado <laughs> and, and, say, and uh, tuna. You know, I mean, we're not, th- this tuna thing up here, these things aren't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Th- they're not going anywhere. And, and, and who knows? What it's going to turn into in, in you know come October if this stuff's going to slide out west or it's going to keep packing in here. There was a year, and this is even before my time, but I saw this happen also in in, uh, in at the end of the year in 1984. There was the same exact the fish did the same thing. It was 25 to 30 pound yellowfin tuna, 35 pound yellowfin tuna, albacore, big eye, skipjack, and everything pushed right up and did the exact same thing. It camped out between say, the border and all the way up off Oceanside along that ridge. And for, like, three weeks, we just clobbered that no fish. No kidding. It was big spots of breaking fish. So, you know, a bunch of bait got in there. Oh, that would suck. Small anchovy. It, it was, <laughs> you know, I, I, can't even, I can't even describe how phenomenal that fishing was. And, and there were, granted, at that time, there wasn't as big of a private boat fleet, but there were a lot of boats fishing that. And it was just, you know. You didn't even Keep need to coming. pick up the glasses. It was just like bird school, <laughs> like bird school. You let's, know, go like, let's go there. As I, as I said many times, it was like going to the supermarket. You, know, you just go out <laughs> and you get your albacore, your yellowfin, your big... You this know, guy's going to stop. He's done. We'll just take this one over. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's rad. Yeah, it was it was pretty phenomenal. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that again. I, I, I think this fishing is going to extend well into the fall and... This uh, I think the bluefin are going to go away. I mean, the water's warm now. That's 73, 74 and, and, and higher. That water eventually will drive those things north. But this yellowfin, man, they're just settling in. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the mixed grade of yellowfin is what's cool. You can see right. bigger ones. I mean, and what could come, right? Can we get a yeah. cow in our backyard? Well, you never know. I know that's happened. Yeah. I, I'm 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 very interested to see if, this, if we're going to get a shot at some big-eye tuna this year. I mean, it's been a long time, and those things are – you know, they associate with the warmer cycles, no question about it. So September, October has always been big eye time. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I'd be more surprised if it didn't happen than didn't if it happen. did. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if we're going to have big schools of them, but, you know, there's going to be some shots of those things mixed in. If there was going to be anything big show up that I would forecast, it would be those. That would be those yeah. things. Yeah. I'm sure, or at least confident or hoping or expect, whatever you want to call it, to see that 100, at least that 100-pound size yellowfin. I'm sure that's going to happen on, a, on, on like, you know, I mean, like, you see those porpoise school fish, like in Cabo and things like that, where guys get those big giant ones on porpoise schools. And we've already had, you know, we've had quite a few 75 sure. and 85-pound yellowfin already caught this year. You know, lone porpoise school guys are trolling on the 302, and they've had 15, 20-pounders already. And then, oh, we'll try this, this little spot of dolphin and get, a, you know, an 85-pounder on a on a Rapala. Like, it just feels like at some point we're, we're going to get a big one. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Tim. So if uh, the big guy come... Uh, how do guys gear up for that? I mean, if if you're going and all of a sudden people are starting to see 100-pound big eye around, how do you change your tackle mode when you're coming on the Royal Star? I don't, you know, I mean, when you're coming on the Royal Star, especially if you're on a longer trip, you're already going to be bringing your long your 60 pound or your 80 pound. You're going to have a bigger rig set bigger up for it. And 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 the one but thing you never know, right? That's exactly right. And and those big eye, you know, usually when they come around, they they're they're not the wisest of fish, let's say. <laughs> you know, so rad. They bite. Yeah, we've experienced that in the past and and it's one of the reasons why we we like targeting them so much. When you get around them, you know, usually they're they they're in the right kind of mode. But if you were specifically out there to target one, the 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 Best advice I could give you, especially with the, the variety of jigs that are available nowadays, I, and, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but I cannot believe how effective those flat fall jigs <laughs> yeah, are. That's crazy, dude. And the, the, the snipers, yeah. the little type jigs yeah. like that, the, the Colt sniper, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Those Colt things. Flat fall. Yeah, the Colt sniper and the flat fall. For, for, for offshore tuna, I'm sure for all kinds of tuna, but for this offshore tuna, you're fishing one of those flat fall jigs right at the crack of dawn. You know, and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, where, where the sun is just set, that period of time, that, that is big eye time. You know, traditionally, it, it, if you're trying to get one of those, and you're trying to get everything else, but, but if you're trying to get one of those, 
that would be the yeah, time to go to one. work in that flat fall jig over that Colt sniper and just make sure you got it on line that's sufficient to handle it. If you do snare one of those big ones, you know, yeah. I, I, I just think use a rule of thumb that you want to be fishing 50 pound anyway, minimum if you minimum. use a jig, but even 60 or 80 pound, you know, if you have any hint that some of those bigger ones are around. So it sure would be cool to have a shot at those big eye again, like we did in the day, just because of the tackle that we have. And that, that, when that big eye fishing was good, was, was just one phase before my time working in the shop. But you know, I mean, it was, it was pen 500s and your bigger gear was a four O and you know, and when you got them, you got them, but you hear all the stories about it. Well, now that same rig that everybody's fishing is a Talica 12 when it's full of spectra and. I mean, sure, is that the reel that you, you know, that maybe when you're looking to catch a 150-pounder, that's not the reel that you're going to buy. But when that one hooks, you're still you're still fully in the driver's seat. Like, the gear is so much better nowadays that I, I would love to see us get a shot at those things. Yeah. Again. It would just be, be so cool. I think all of us would, right? It would be a slaughter is what it would I think be. So. Yeah. Those things, you know, I historically, so they... Although we have had some that pull, you know, you get, a, you get the occasional devil fish on there. A lot of them, especially when they go in that biting mode, they're just... They just shake Suicide their head a few times right. and come right at the boat. Yeah. <laughs> that, that low gear on the Talico exactly. or one of those accurate reels. Or, oh, my God. It'd just be, oh, Get I'd live for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, let's hope that day comes. Day. Let's yeah. hope. So we have, we've we been talking tuna. We haven't even talked about the amazing yellowtail fishing, yeah. too. Oh, the, the right? fishing Up for yellowtail. Down the coast. I know. It's just been phenomenal. Incredible. And the grade of fish oh. this year. The grade of they fish. They grew we, up, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's really encouraging to see that kind of quantity of yellowtail around. Obviously, bodes well for, for the future. Yeah, no You doubt. know, not just this year, but we're talking, I mean, all the different size classes. Two, Why three, do you four, think that five, is? Five. It's just a beneficial it's a, it's a beneficial set of conditions right yeah. now for recruitment in that yellowtail population. It has been for a long time. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the reasons They're not why a the, commercially targeted species, not so really. that might help, too. No, I mean, there's some, yeah. there's some local gill netting that goes on on the coast yeah. of Mexico, and, and, and I think there, there's a... a you know, an occasional opportunistic per saint set made on by a small coastal saint. But there's no real big industrial targeted yeah. fishery. Thank God. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, it's really, I mean, it is the sport fish of the West Coast. It's yeah, the right. bread and butter sport fish for good reason. You know, those things are just absolutely phenomenal. We've talked about it before on the show. But in addition to being phenomenal sport fish from their surface feeding behavior to the, you know, I mean, the, the 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 quality of the fish and then the quality of the product too. Yeah. I mean, you spike those things, bleed them, get them on the ice, get them in the RSW. It, it's just. They're, I mean, I love eating. There's them. a lot of people. Oil. You know, it's funny is a lot of people kind of. Eh, I'm not a big yellowtail fan. You haven't had good yellowtail. That's because they've never taken care of one, right? Or they never had one that's been taken care of, right? And, and we have, I, I, you know, a thousand, five thousand converts now that, oh, that yeah. have come off Royal Star in the past. 10, 15 years, and this RSW thing has been going on, what now, 12 years, a long time. I mean, if you enjoy eating white meat, uh, like a halibut or a sea bass, I mean, yellowtail's right in that same class. Oh, absolutely. If you take care of it. Yeah, it's got, yeah. It, I, it maybe even has better flavor. You know? I, I, I would agree. I mean, it, yeah. the, the texture, the flavor, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal food fish. It, it and, and what you can do is, I'm not a chef, so I won't go down the bon vivant road, but, you know, <laughs> all I know is it's good. And every, good. every way I've had it prepared when it's taken care of properly, oh, yeah. it's, it's right up there with any yeah. premium quality fish. So, you know, the quantity of them around, again, wh- where we see this yellowtail. Oh, I was going to say, that coming up, the, co- the fact that all this yellowtail is up here this year, and, and, and it was pretty good last year, but this year is even a new bar. I mean, how many... How many boats right now could be out there slaying the yellowtail, but everybody's like, ah, oh, you're right. Yeah. Exactly. Like tuna right we here. We did that never... in May and June, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over it. Yeah, tuna are up yeah. here, and, and, and they're off oh, here for right. that. So, I mean, there's yellowtail up and down the coast. It's it's pretty it's a pretty incredible time, pretty incredible opportunities at those. That'll, that'll uh, you know, we all know, we all know that this this big El Nino cycle, let's call it that, this is, is you know, it's got legs right now, but it's going to come to an end. Yeah. So. The one thing I would encourage everybody to do is get out there Enjoy and take it. advantage of it. Yeah, I can say up. for sure that <clears throat> there aren't going to be very many years where you're out there 10 miles off Mission Bay, you know, <laughs> targeting 25 to 35 pound tuna every day. You know, you're gonna, just, you, we're going to say, remember that summer of 2015? No yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, There's it's, no it's going to happen. It. Yeah. It was a, yeah. a particular day where we we literally did like the stop and you know the smell the roses thing. We were on the nine mile bank, like the north end, maybe just above the nine mile bank, and like. Kind of sun afternoon going down later in the day, and you looked around in the glasses, and it was, we were in it, we were just finishing up, and there was 
I think seven or eight sport boats, and every single one was in a drift, and we were eleven. We were eleven miles from where my punch out clock is at work. You know what I mean? Like eleven miles, and there was every single boat was in a drift. Every single one. And here's on the fish. other scenario too. Typically, our best weather is September, October, right? Exactly right. Flat, calm. Yeah. So we got we have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> I think it's going to be that. That's also. I mean, it's, it's worth mentioning the fact that this fish has been so close to the beach. I mean, how rare is it that you actually have any 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 weather to contend with when you're five, eight, ten, yeah. fifteen miles we live off, in a pump off Point Loma around here? Yeah, I mean, I look at the weather, I study it religiously every day, and and nine days out of ten, this little bubble right in here on the coast, you know, it's just grease calm. <laughs> you go twenty five miles west, you go fifty miles west, and we we deal with the wind swell in here. You know, it's it's honking out there, yeah. man. It's not pretty. Different you get outside world. San Clemente Island, outside of Catalina San Nick, out there, it's not not fun and. And we've had a lot of northwest wind this year, a lot down the beach. <clears throat> By down the beach, I mean, you know, out in front of Colnett, San Martin, Geronimo, San Carlos, farther down, the areas that, that, that we typically do a lot of our offshore fishing in, in the long-range fleet. That, that's been a wind tunnel this year, man. Yeah. There's been a lot of northwest wind, way more so than we've seen probably in the past three, four years. There's been, I mean, I can count the number of calm days on one hand between yesterday and going all the way back into June. It's just been a wind. Why do you think that is? Just just well, function offshore, high pressure set up. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure it has anything to do with water temperature, but that standard wind machine, you get a low pressure centered over Yuma or somewhere around there and a high pressure offshore out west of of uh, Point Conception. And there you go. It just creates wind. It creates wind, It's yeah. the wind machine. And and it was interesting because in July we had that one hurricane come up and it it, it looked like all right here we go you Not know sure. we're gonna have that because when those things right. do that typically that makes just grease calm beautiful weather it it breaks up that high pressure that dominant high pressure ridge out there but that just stopped it stopped I mean it stopped we had yeah. one just just last week we had one storm that kind of halfway came up and broke up and that and and. It did break it up, and that's what happened. We had some beautiful, calm weather. And with that hurricane in early June. Right. Yeah. yeah. But and but since then, it's just the machine kind of shut off. It's yeah. going to be really interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on, you know, again, it goes back to I'm glad we have that shorter trip there in October and those yeah. five days at the end because th- this could be a really active cycle. Yeah. And, you know, later we always – Later on. Yeah, it could be. And we always make do, you know, whatever. You, you, you go where, wherever the storm isn't and wherever the fish are. Sure. And, and, again, right now, I'm not – They have all that sophisticated equipment. That's exactly right. There. Yeah. Yeah, the weather forecasting. You don't drive into a hurricane. Yeah, you drive away from it. Away from it, it. You know what? I mean, we could go on and on for hours about this, but, but it's I could break it down. There's absolutely no way in God's green earth that you should ever be within – you know, 250 miles of one of those things with it, with the forecasting and the equipment that we have on board and the networking we have, the communications, it's absolutely impossible to be caught by one of those things or be in a position where, where, you know, you're, you're, you're the security of the vessel is in right. any way threatened. I mean, there's Given just a knowledgeable and sophisticated uh, abs- uh, operator like absolutely. you and your game. Absolutely. Right? It just, it just can't happen. You know I mean? It's a sacred responsibility of safety of that boat and that, and, and those people on there. I mean, that's what our responsibility is. It's just not going to happen. No, it's absolutely right. not going to happen. It's not going to happen on, on, on any of the, you know, the, of the quality. qualified yeah. quality long range boats. It's just not going to happen. And, you know our boats are are good. They're seaworthy. These are these are boats that are built to do what they do. But there isn't a boat out there that's built to go through a hurricane. You know? It's as simple <laughs> as that. You know? I don't care how. Even the ones in deadliest catch aren't aren't made. That's for that. that's yeah. exactly right. No boat is. So you know, sure. taking that as the as the foremost you know fact. You know, we don't we don't put ourselves anywhere near no, those things. Don't do it. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. A lot to talk about with Captain Tim Ekstrom well, you, and the Royal Star. You're not kidding. And just such good timing. We're so pumped. It's going to be an awesome show. Tons to cover. And we want you to join us this morning. Give us a call. We would love to hear from you on Let's Talk Hookup. If you want to get through, it's going to be a very busy morning. We do have one single phone line open to the building right now if you want it. It's a toll-free number, toll-free 877 877- Seven nine two ten ninety. Again, one more time. Eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. It's open right now. That's your shot to get through. We also have a local line. It's full right now, but there's going to be plenty of shots to get through over the next two hours. Again, that one's eight five eight four five seven ten ninety. Local line again. Eight five eight four five seven. 
10 9. Not only going to be talking fishing, talking all kinds of fun on the Royal Star, we've also got a really cool prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show today. And how appropriate to have the long range man here himself to have a really cool gift from Aftco. And that's a brand new Aftco Socorro belt and the Aftco Max Force harness. Thanks to Aftco for that really killer prize. Perfect long range setup right there. You Catch want, a cow. You want to have a nice long range belt and harness? That's it. A really, really cool gift from our good friends at Aftco. So thank you for that. And hey, when we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls lots of great info coming your way you stay tuned you're listening to southern california's sport fishing voice it's let's talk hook up on the mighty 1090 get it all at dana landing in mission bay it's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water looking for a fishing charter dana landing had you covered with several boats including the new blackjack perfect for two to four anglers and the impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures, and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. Have you ever imagined casting a fly or a lure on one of the most beautiful and productive rivers in Alaska? At Katmai Lodge, you can catch up to all five species of Pacific salmon. The king, sockeye, chum, pink, and silver salmon, along with rainbow trout, arctic grayling, dolly varden, and other native stream fish. When anglers dream of trophy salmon and trout, the Alagnac River is their destination, and Katmai Lodge is the premier base camp. Being the original river-based lodge on the Alagnac gives the facility a leg up on the competition. Both experienced and novice anglers have rated Katmai Lodge and its knowledgeable guides as the best of the best. Katmai Lodge is remote, yet offers all the amenities of a first-class lodge. During your Alaska visit, you'll see amazing wildlife, brown bears, caribou, eagles, moose, otters, and much more. Schedule a day trip on their private De Havilland Otter Float Plane and visit the world-famous Brooks Falls. Book online at katmai.com or call 1-800-330- 0326. That's catmy.com or call 1 800 330 0326 for the fishing adventure of a lifetime. It's big, it's comfortable, and she is beautiful. The state of the art long range sport fishing vessel, the Independence. Veteran captains Mark Paisano and Paul Strasser built this incredible 112 foot vessel with the most modern technology and luxurious comfort available. Captain Jeff Dubois has helped make the Independence a top notch operation. Call Independence Sport Fishing at 619. 619- 226-6006 or check the availability on spring, summer and fall trips now at independentsportfishing.com When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, CalStar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the CalStar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalStar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cook Up on the Mighty 1090. Mr. Ryan Christensen is back in town. Yeah. We missed him yesterday on the phones. And uh, I'll tell you what, Brett's glad he's in there. He's <laughs> yeah, the busy board day today. today. Managing the busy phones this morning. And Ryan just came back from our Let's Talk Hook Up trip aboard the Player Supreme four day, his annual Ryan Christensen invitational uh, trip there. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing today? Great. And you got back yesterday. How was your trip? You know, it was it was really good. We uh, we got on that yellowfin fishing and uh, we pretty much stayed local the whole trip. But we had a uh, we had good fishing on that real nice grade of yellowfin, and it was a uh, Great group of guys, and it was just an all-around good trip. Yeah, a lot of good giveaways on the on the Let's Talk Hookup trip there. Yeah, a lot of nice giveaways. The food was awesome. Uh, it was just a really good trip. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'm glad to be back, and you probably have a lot of fresh sashimi to be. Uh, uh, I do. Out it's out all over right? at uh, Fisherman's Processing as we speak. There you go. Yeah, go well pick done. It up after the show. Well, nice, great, great to have you back, Ryan. And glad you had such a great time out there on the water. It's always the long-range fleet in San Diego. 
is a spoiler. Oh yeah, it was just it was just a great great trip, a nice relaxing vacation. The weather was awesome, and uh, and Drew and crew did a really good job, and it was an awesome group of guys, and it was just an all around great trip. Yeah. Now for everybody else on the boat, it was a vacation. For you, it was field trip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was. Yeah. yeah. Let's make that perfectly clear, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. Everybody always accuses Rick and I of being on vacation. It's like this is not yeah, Ryan vacation. Works. This is work. This is field research. Store, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's hard to I couldn't and sell tackle to people if I didn't go out and use it. I got to do it, saying, man. Baby, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you got to try it out. Well, great, great to have nice you job, back. Ryan. Glad, uh, glad you had a good trip for the Player Supreme and uh, uh, enjoy that fish. Yes, I will. Yeah. Speaking of fishermen's processing, Tim, man, those guys oh, uh, have taken things to the next level. It's just unreal. I dropped a load of fish off on the dock the other day. Um, what a great service that is. My gosh. You know, going back to the being the year of the private boater. What an incredible service in, in, in every respect. It doesn't matter what kind of boat you're coming yeah. off now, but, but the, the expansion that we've seen in our, in our, our, in our customer base going from, you know, all the way from the, the, the overnight boats, the one-day boats coming in, the day-and-a-half boats, yeah. two days, and now the, the private boat traffic. And, and a lot of the guys, you know, that picked up big time last year. Kind of the word got out, you yeah. know, once, once the trailer boat guys started coming through there and, and, and seeing how convenient that was and talking about it among their friends, it grew. But this year, it's just a whole other level. I mean, how easy is that? It's and so the, incredible. Well, and the thing is, you drop them off at the dock, you go, you you kind of washing the boat off on the way back through the channel there. You tie the boat or put the boat back on the trailer. By the time you get back to Fisherman's Processing, it's all vacuum packed and perfectly ready for you. Yeah, or the guys on with the boats already in the trailer. That's 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 even better. That's yeah. one of my favorites. You know, because we have that drive through yeah. driveway. Perfect. You just exactly. you you pull your boat right up in the front. <laughs> they drive. You know, throw bring up a barrel, put it on the. Or put a if you got a lot of fish, they put a tote in the forklift, raise a fork right up to the level of the oh, deck. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, right up yeah. to the level of the deck of the skiff. You stand it on your trailer and just oh, that's sh- even better. Throw it in there and 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 away you go. You just keep driving straight and drive right out of the parking <laughs> yeah. lot. That that easy. And, 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 and crew. Yeah. And then the other thing is, if it's after hours, you get you call them ahead that's and you get the uh, access to the slush bin. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, for sure. Um, hey, let's go live to the Pacific Queen right now. Captain Drew Cards on the water. Good morning, Drew. Morning, guys. How's it going this morning? What's hey, up, Drew? Terrific. Are they biting? Well, uh, not at the moment, <laughs> but we are doing a little something different here today. We're we're on a two-day trip. We had excellent fishing yesterday. Oh, we were fishing that local yellowfin tuna, and uh, I mean, this is how good fishing is. I, I felt like we had a slow day. You know, we were kind of just picking away here, there. We had 20 here. 10 there, 30 there, but it, it, it seemed, in my opinion, a little slow, you know, and at the end of the day, it felt like the day went real fast, you know, at the end of the day, I was like, where'd the day go, and I looked down at my, my notepad, and I started accumulating everything, I was like, man, we had 120 elf and tuna today, <laughs> it was pretty good fishing, but, you know, it just seemed, it seemed like a little bit slower, but that's kind of like how fishing is right now, there's, it's, it's such good fishing that, you know, catching 120 fish, you know, just here, 10 here, 10 there, 15 there, 20 there, seems so, sort of slow. But it's uh, very good fishing. We're we're out trying something a little bit different today. We're trying for some Dorado. Uh, so far, we haven't found a kelp, but uh, we, there's been very good Dorado fishing locally as well. So I, I, we got really high hopes. And uh, you know, it's been a it's been just an incredible week out here. We've I, we've caught. Tons of yellowfin tuna all week. I don't think there's really been a day that we miss. I don't think the fleet has really missed all week. There's just tons of fish around, and it seems like it's uh, you know they're they're not uh, they're not faking this out as much anymore. We're starting to you know they're starting to bite a little better, and we're we're keeping on them. So I think uh, things are really heading in the right direction, and I think uh, things are only getting better. That's ah, so I love good. that, Dan. Yeah, that is such a great idea. Now, what about the Pacific Queen? What's your schedule like, Drew? Well, I think we're, well, I know we're sold out all week, and, and September's starting to fill up real quick. Our next trip with availability is Sunday night, so a week from tonight, we have a two-day trip, uh, lots of room on that one, and then after that, things are starting to fill up pretty quick. So, if, if guys want to come fishing with us, they really do need to think about booking early got a ton of multi-day trips uh lined up multi-day trip right now is is really cool because there's there's three or four different areas where you can fish and some different things you can do 
So our multi-day trips are, you know, they're really popular, and it's a good time of year to be fishing that, you know, on a multi-day. So if they want to come fishing, 619-221-8500 is the number to Fisherman's Landing. Or you guys can sign up on our website at Pacific dash queen.com just go to the schedule link and you can book right there on our website awesome drew card from the pacific queen you can hear that sonar clicking in the background he's fishing so hope you get him drew and thanks a lot for that on the water report appreciate that very much how crazy is that you know oh, we're having a slow day and to hear that you know look down at the total off the tower feeling it was a slow pace and look down at the tally board at the end of the day see there's 120 like okay all right yeah, well, i guess like, it wasn't day. slow yeah. after all you guys are spoiled well you know right. it's yeah. awesome. the, the expectation is such that yeah. yeah it's like it's like when you go long range fishing and you're down uh below and you're just like man it was a tough day we only had it was a tough trip we only had 20 cows it's like yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well, we didn't we didn't we didn't get our limit you know yeah. we, were, we were six <laughs> under our limit or whatever i yeah. you know, wish we would have got our limits yeah. we make that joke all the time you know it just comes to quantity alone sometimes you you look in the hatch and you know whatever for whatever reason that limit thing you know it's that psychological you know that's the mark and if you don't quite reach it but then you you've got Whatever it may be, a hundred less, and your actual limit in the hatch is full, and you're going, yeah, yeah. God, I'm glad we didn't catch any more. Yeah, exactly. you know, I really like like the quality of the bluefin tuna we're catching, you know, or we're catching, and and it's bigger fish. How many more than two do you really need, right? Well, if, yeah, I mean, the, the need is, the, is yeah. the key word there. You don't need any more than that. You'd like more than that. Yeah, you'd you know? like more than that. <laughs> yeah, because you got a lot of friends, man. A lot of catch and release, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. It, yeah. It, 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 those things, uh. You know, there's just something about that. You get one of those up there, pet putting that thing aboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys know I'm the pro- big proponent of catch and release. Oh, no especially, doubt. Especially when you're tagging them. But I'm not sure that, uh, let's say, a little of that would go a long way. Yeah, to quote yeah. old Marty Miller. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's hope it doesn't last a long time. Well, let's go ahead and jump into those jam-packed phone lines. They want to talk to you, Tim. You got it, man. Well, everybody, everybody's getting stacked up here. Why don't we start it off this morning with Dan? He's calling us from Encinitas this morning. Dan, good morning, and thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, guys. Thanks for taking call. Pete. Good morning. Rich, Tim. Good morning. Hi, Dan. Tim, question for you. Uh, if I want to do, like, a five-day Royal Star in the future, uh, if, and if I just want to, like, chip off, you know, put a down payment, so I can, you know, chip off little payments here and there. Is that an option? Absolutely. You can work that out with Tracy. Call her direct at uh, 224-4764-619 area code. She is 100% flexible. We do that with with a, a pretty significant number of anglers. They send in 100 bucks a month or, or, you know, 200 bucks a month, whatever it may be, whatever suits their budget. And she uh, sets it aside an account. And when uh, trip time comes, you're all paid in full. Okay, so, so cool. when you want to book online, can you do that? Can you put book a spot online and then put a hundred dollars down on a on a trip? You <laughs> you might you guys have me in a corner okay. now. I, I don't know if I can. An, yeah, I I can't answer that. I, I know you can put you can, you can book online. You can put money down online. But yeah. but as far as is making like, like recurring payments or something, like, you'd have to work that out with Tracy. Yeah. 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 I wish she was here right now. Maybe she'll call in. Yeah. There you go. All right. Hey, but that's a good way to do it because then when the trip comes. Uh, you know, you just exactly. lose using your slush funny. It's like, hey, it's a free trip. Yeah, get a little side job here, or there. Got a little extra spending cash. Go throw five hundred bucks down towards the trip. Chip away a little bit here or there. I, I totally agree. That's, that's exactly. A great and, way and, to go. and like I said, she does that with a lot of anglers. It has you know ever since we've we've started. So that's pretty common. That's awesome. One more question. Shoot. Sure. Uh, as far as that uh that diver that got attacked by the hammerhead, was that a uh. Was that an actual, uh, like, spear diver? You got spear one diver? on us. I don't know. Yeah, news to me. I haven't heard but that I'll either. tell you what, the last two times I've been fishing on my boat, there was hammerheads circling around the boat, so I don't think I'm... Yeah, it was, like, 100 miles out, and, like, I wasn't sure if it was a free diver or fish, you know, actual, like... Yeah. There was yeah. Well, they're, they're, or in a, not. they're an aggressive shark. There's no question about that, so... And there's, you know, these warm water years, just like last year, there's tons of hammers around right now. You see them everywhere. Yeah. And they're aggressive. They're they're hunting. When they they're can right. be. They're all, they get all fired up. I'm surprised to hear that somebody actually got attacked. I mean, that's really? kind of, that's extremely rare. I don't I know what the thing shot. was. If he was trying to pet it or what. I don't know. <laughs> that's one Just thing. Just kidding. I don't. I, you know who knows. <laughs> yeah. One thing weird about those particular sharks is they they can just be one on or off 
for sure. So it seems so much more than others. Like half of the ones that we've seen out there have been late, just lazy, scratching, fin on the surface, just cruising around, whatever. And then other ones, man, would be in a in a in a you know in a stop catching tuna. When they come in, man, they come in hot. Like, come in hot they come and in looking. Re- they yeah. come in real hot. And like you hope you're not the guy. You hope you're not like the middle guy. So it's always been that we'd always had like two or three going or something. And if the one was real close to Gaff, okay, we know we're probably going to get that one. And the one guy's a long ways away. He's probably okay. If you're the guy in the middle, it's we always start like oh. Jeff, you're screwed. It's about it's about to be you. Yeah. Second later, boom, boom, yeah, gone. Yeah. You know, got him. You're about to get hammered. <laughs> That's what we say. I got hammered. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's head south then to Rancher Land Arrows. Gary's Barnes Webb is filling in for John Ireland, who's still out on vacation and enjoying a a trip in Vietnam of all places with his wife Jennifer. Who, by the way, happy birthday, Jennifer Ireland today. Oh, Good morning, cool. Gary. Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? They're still tearing it up there in, in the, with the fishing, I guess, huh? Oh, yeah. It's good. How about down there? Well, I tell you what, this week it exploded. You know, last week I gave a pretty tepid report. Things are kind of slow, but this week everything kind of went off. You know, there's very, very good weather, no sign of any weather below us. Um, of course, we're getting a few storms in the mountains, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, but nothing to affect the fishing. Beautiful days, flat, calm seas. We've got good bait available. And funny enough, dead sardines are doing most of the damage. Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah. But uh, the marlin the bites sort of as normal, you know, as you know, at this time of the year, it's pretty stable. We're catching blue sails, stripes, all mostly pretty close. You know, the Larry Vera Bank here is producing most of the fish. But the bigger news for us this week was uh, the arrival of some really good tuna fishing. And the Dorado are back for some reason. We kind of had a lapse of about... A month there where we didn't catch any Dorado. I think if you recall, the Dorado shoot out a 13-pound fish one. That's right, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, this week... Not for the guys that won it. Yeah, not for exactly. Team Baracho, that's for sure. <laughs> Unbelievable. But anyhow, there, there were schoolies all over the East Cape this week again, so there was tons of Dorado fishing. Uh, the tuna bite down south of Friday's Wienerama's was producing fish between 25 and 50 pounds all week. Everybody kind of loaded up on those. Those guys that went out and tried the bottom really did well. And for some reason, we're catching yellowtail. Go figure that out. I mean, good yellowtail fishing off La Rivera right now. The guys came in with it. One boat came in with four or five the uh, day before yesterday. Good fish, you know, 30 to 40 pounds. And, of course, all the other culprits are around, Cabrillo, Pompano, Pargo. Rooster fishing is a little slow, I have to confess. The fish just aren't around the edges. They've, I think they're further off in deeper water still. But uh, kind of tough to find, you know. It's not something that you – they're not on the surface, put it that way. So it's kind of tough to find the roosters. Um, other than that, it's, it's really been a good week. Everybody real happy. Uh, and, and this week is a little slower with boats. So if you want to come down, this would be a, a great time to come down. Yeah, it sounds good, Gary. How do we do that? If we want to come to Rancho Lanero, how do we book a trip to Rancho Lanero? Well, our, our 800 number, 646-2252, speak to Olivia or Jeannie. And, of course, our website and webcam is on www.rancholeonero.com. That'll lead you to a booking page. Um, and I'll see you down here. All right. Very good, Gary. Thanks for filling in for John Ireland. I think he'll be back next week, right? Yes, uh, he's coming in sometime this week. This week. All right. Very good, Gary. Thanks a lot for the call. Okay, and bye. good job. And talk to you guys next week. Excellent. Bye. All right. Hey, well, let's jump right back into the phones. are packed up. Don in Woodland Hills, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Don. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Tim, um, you guys nailed it with your RSW system, and I, for one, just absolutely love and will go no other place than Fisherman's Processing to have my fish taken care of because it is the best. So my question for you is how do you manage a RSW system on your boat to keep the fish as, as pristine as you do? Uh, what we do, first of all, w- when you land the fish, you know, we don't allow that thing to beat itself up. One of the guys or myself, we're on it right away. We, we drive that spike into its brain and, and, and knock it down so it doesn't flap, it doesn't bang. You know, the guys aren't doing the, you know, acrobatic flip it off the gaff and do a, a four-foot body slam on it. You know, that makes a big difference. Spike it right away so it doesn't beat itself up, bleed it, and then... It's really important to maintain that temperature in the tank, and, and that's really where we have a, a huge advantage. We don't cycle our tanks on a thermostat, and a lot of guys do. They 
they let it get down to, say, 32, and then the refrigeration kicks off, and the temperature comes up to 35 or 36, then the, the unit kicks back on, and it pulls it down to 32. So it's just all day long it's going up and down. The way our system's set up, we actually regulate the amount of refrigerant going into the tank, into that evaporator, and, and we, we keep it running all the time. So it maintains a constant temp. Seawater doesn't freeze until 28. So if you can get your refrigeration where it's hovering right at about 30, and, and, and that's where we keep it, 30, 31, once we get it to that temp, we just regulate the amount of, of, of Freon going in there, back it way off, and it just holds at that constant temp. And if we add a bunch of fish... We go down there and we'll actually give it more gas, you know, and if it, and once, once the fish slows down or the temperature, you know, we stop adding heat to it, we'll pinch it back off. But really, I, I think the magic of our system and why our product is, is consistently different is that we maintain that, that temp. It never goes up. It never comes up to 35, 36, 34. And, and, and I can tell you from the process in the beginning, you know, we were just figuring it out. You cannot believe, especially if the fish has been in there for a period of time, say like four or five days or longer, you can't believe the difference between fish that, that, that we unload that's been held at 32 or 33 and fish that's unloaded at 30 to 31. It is like night and day. Really? That much better at 30 and 31. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. You actually will be unloading fish, and, and, and back in the day, guys would be walking by going, oh, those fish are frozen, right? And like, no, fresh. no, it's fresh. Oh, really? It looks like see. it just swam out of the water. Yeah, and they're, and they're firm. You know, they have that nice integrity to yeah, them. Yeah. And, and if the temperature is too high in the tank when you unload them, they're kind of rubbery. You know, uh-huh. it's not, the meat isn't ruined or anything. Yeah, but, but, it's yeah, a but com- the meat gets softer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a completely different product. Wow. And, and I'm telling you, two, three degrees makes a huge difference, and especially over the period of, a, of, you know, five days, a week in there. Those little things make all the difference in the world. And, and, and that is the difference between the way we do it and the way our competitors do it. So let me ask you this. We're just talking about Dorado. What what do you do with a Dorado when it comes on the boat? I mean, it's easy to spike a tuna. How do you spike a Dorado? You spike the same thing. Same way. Right, right above the eye. Only thing is, is, you know, Dorado consistent with everything about them. Dorado have a brain about the size of a pinhead. Yeah. Where, you know, a tuna, it's like, bam, he's done. Yellowtail, right. bam, he's done. Dorado... <laughs> Man, I don't know how you do it. The, the Watch boys that are tail. The boys are yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, hence, hence the name ball slappers. But uh, the boys are so good at it now. Okay. Blake Wasano, Paul, um, Carameo on there. All, all the guys, they just yeah. go on and on. But those guys, Steve, are going. It's, it, they one of those draw. We land on the deck and you know they're going berserk and they one hand oh, on the fish, bam! They hit that thing in the head and it. It's heavenly. Yeah. It's <laughs> heavenly. There's nothing better than landing on a 25 pound Dorado and not having that wild son of a gun flap one time. It's all just, over the uh, place. Yeah. They get that Donner. fixed stare yeah. <laughs> looking straight You're ahead. Done. Oh, it's so happy. The one thing I will say, Don, is, be, you know, getting a chance to spend, you know, days at a time at sea on the Royal Star is whoever the guy is in charge of the RSW, the engineer, whoever's job it is, like, you can see them, you know, whether it's Paul or Gerby or whoever seems to be in charge of that, you know, refrigeration system. It's like a major deal for them. Like you see them all the time. It might be a travel day where there's kind of nothing going on, and you know, you get a rare ten minutes to BS with one of the boys, you know, sitting down on the rail, and they start looking at their watch and getting twitchy. Like, okay, man, I gotta go, and you know, head, you know, hatch, earmuffs on downstairs, on just the... exactly, just why the fish make... is better. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Thanks a lot because the... it's a lot of work. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got more. Let's talk hookup coming your way. More your phone calls. More great information. We're gonna check in with the catch report. Find out what's biting up and down the beach. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup, Mighty 1090. Mark your calendar for the big event. The Long Fin in Orange is having their annual Customer Appreciation Day, Saturday, September 12th. It's their biggest sale ever, with over 20 manufacturer representatives setting up booths in the Long Fin parking lot, all bringing unbelievable sale prices. Meet representatives from Shimano and PowerPro and take advantage of unheard savings on selected Shimano products, including Shimano Rods and Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and Power Pro Lines. See what's new from Shimano, like the Terramar Rod Series. Get tremendous savings on fresh and saltwater tackle from every manufacturer. Bring your reel and get it serviced for free with minimum purchase. Plus, you can win big in the raffle with hundreds of giveaways. Unbelievable prices for this one-day only sale. Saturday, September 12th from 7 to 7 at the Long Fin, 2730 East Chapman, just off the 55 Freeway in Orange. For directions or more information, check out the website at thelongfin.com. 
It's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And what's better way to tell a story yeah, right cool. from the horse's mouth, as they say, Captain Tim Ekstrom, about Talica. Trinidad. The, the, the Trinidad. Trinidad. Talicas, too. It doesn't matter what Shimano product we talk. Just durability alone. I'm so impressed by that product. You know, my son, Duke, um, years ago, we're talking four years ago now, they sent down a Talica or a, tr- a Trinidad 14A for my son, Duke, and, and he has been using that that reel on board Royal Star and for all the other fishing he does. But four different summers now, he, he spent 26 days out there with us this year, and, 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 huh? and the years prior, we have not touched that reel one time. We wash off with fresh water, that's it. We haven't opened it, we haven't touched the drag. That, Unreal. And four we keep years. it on the boat between trips and all the guys, four you know, we, yeah, we hand off fish with it. That, that one reel has literally caught Hundreds of tuna and yellowtail. No drag Hundreds. changing, no nothing. You've never, that, you know, that EI surface treatment just makes it durable. Yeah. And, and the way they build it. Too. And it, it's still, it's functioning the same. I was going to bring it into you next week <laughs> just to look at it. I mean, the thing is is absolutely amazing. And, and to me, you know, you want gear that works, you want the trick stuff, but it, it, it can't be it, it can't be so complicated that it that it breaks down regularly. You know, what I mean, we got to rely on that that gear to work, and and you just cannot, you cannot find a more durable, dependable. Product product than, uh, than that. I know that. The that Shimano, a, but, Trinidad A. But all of them, you know, all of them that we've had on the boat for years and years, they function, even when they get beat up on the outside, man, those things are solid on the inside. Check it out it. at your local Shimano dealer. My Angler H2O. I will never use that fakey fluorescent pink bait or drag my hula popper through the mud. I will outmaneuver drought-exposed stumps, rocks, and submerged station wagons and outsmart the ravenous river otter. I will save water by taking shorter showers for higher lakes, and I will always, always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer for the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter captains in all of Sitka, and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut like the ones we do almost every year, and salmon? Well, Sitka is famous for some of the best runs in Alaska. We also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. And listen to this, it's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except the tips. It's truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Come and join me on the Let's Talk hookup trip in June, or just go when you can. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136, or check kingfisherchartercom XSPRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Kent goes into third with the first cycle in San Diego Padre history. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. As promised, it's time to find out what's biting out there. Today, the Catch Report sponsored in part by the busiest guys in San Diego, and that's Fisherman's Processing. Hey, summer fishing means it's time to call Fisherman's Processing. If you're on a private boat, call them the day before so you can make whatever arrangements you need with your fish, whether you want to drive right up to the dock, bring the fish to them, whatever it takes. Fisherman's Processing will take care of your fish from your private boat. And you can use all the services, whether it be smoked fish, jerky, those premium cans, those great new tuna burgers, filleted to your specifications. And as always, Fisherman's Processing is ready for the grill. There's no trimming. There's no bloodline. There's no anything. You get perfect product every time from Fisherman's Processing. For more information, you can friend them on Facebook at Fisherman's Processing. Or for more details, check Fisherman'sProcessing.com. Let's start up at Dana War Sport Fishing. Talk to the man, Captain Brian Woolley's on the line. What's up, Woolley? Hey, good morning. What's happening, guys? How are you this morning? Doing really good. Good morning. Good, good. Hey, man, Rick, another uh, just, just good fishing continued for us this week. You know, this, this offshore stuff, you know, we've got multiple boats on fish. All week, you know, it, some days have been a little bit better than others. You know, it's, it's all about being in the right place at the right time, you know, finding the right bird school, you know, having that one fish thin on the surface. Just, you know, little signs and stuff like that, but being in the right place at the right time has certainly been a huge part of it. But, you know, we're having shots of fish every day, which is, you know, all you can really ask for. And, you know, like I said, some days are a little bit better than others, but still seeing that good mix, that yellow fin, 
you know, that stuff's anywhere from like eight to thirty pounds in some schools, and you know, some schools we don't mix a little bit smaller, eight to twenty. It just it all kind of depends, but uh, you know, it's all good catchable fish. So you know, some of our counts we sprinkle with Fiorado on top of that, and you know, maybe a bluefin here or there. But uh, you know, it's just made for some super fun fishing. What What's crazy with all this tuna and all this stuff, you know, this, this yellow cell on the outside has been kind of been non-existent. You know, we haven't found, you know, a good kelp with, with good solid yellow on it like, you know, we have in, in years past. But, you know, certainly the yellow cell fishing along the beach has made up for it. You know, our half-day guys and, you know, some of the three-quarter day trips that are wanting to stay local have been, uh, you know, along with the quality sizzling calico bass action, you know, the yellow cell fishing has been really good. I know we had a... Uh, a group on the boat yesterday, and we were able to put uh, 11 real nice 25 to 28 pound uh, yellows on the boat for them yesterday morning. That too has just been all about being on the right kelp line at the right time of the day with you know the right anglers. So things are biting. You know, like I said, the calico bass fishing clearly overlooked, phenomenal for our half the anglers and our twilight guys have had some really good, really good counts on that stuff too. So. We're still rolling. We're going to have boats out there uh, on the stuff offshore all week, as well as along the coast here locally as well. So guys want to hop on a trip. Certainly uh, reservations are going to be the way to go. The loads are starting to lighten up a little bit with kids going back to school and that kind of stuff. But but certainly uh, you you want to call the office and make your reservation. In order to do that, the number there is 949-496-5794. Of course, you can check us out on the web at danawarf.com. And then on the if you want to these local half-day trips, if you want to save some money, you can link us right there through the Let's Talk Cook Up webpage, and I'll take you over, and you can book like that. So we're we're hoping for another good week this week. All right. Well, certainly great fishing going on, dude, with this great weather coming. I don't know I don't know how it's going to get better, Willie, but we'll take it, man. Yeah, awesome, we, we awesome want week it. At Dana Wars well, Sport Fishing, congratulations to all you guys for putting in the extra effort, making all that offshore fish happen. Not an easy thing to do in a short amount of time, but you guys have just been consistently on, and it's really cool to see. It's been good, you know, like you said, yeah, you know, we don't have the, the luxury of shutting down on the gray and, you know, hoping that that stuff fights for it. Just get out there, you know, pay attention, find a spot, and make it count when you have to. So hopefully it'll carry through for us this week. You guys are certainly doing it, man. Great report, as always, Willie. One more time, shoot us a phone number. Somebody wants to make a reservation, come fishing with you. Cool. The number to our office, guys, is 949-496-5794. Right on. Great job, Willie. Appreciate that. We'll talk to you next week. All righty. Thanks, Rick. All right. Thanks all for that. Now it's time to hit the surf, our surf zone. The surf guru, Gundy Gunderson, is on the line. What's up, Gundy? Hey, gentlemen. How's it going? Gundy. Hey, gosh, another good week. And we got another player in the game this week, some more striped bass popping up, you know. Typically in spring you'd see some striped bass, cooler water, but we're not going to ask questions. We'll just uh, we'll deal with it. Here, let's start up north. The excellent Corbina bite continues. And uh, as we go the next several weeks here, these beaches – are going to start clearing up with less folks on. And and there's just so much of this Corbina on the beaches right now. It's going to be a really good fall. Uh, Wiley's up in Malibu reported still good grade of Corbina, two to four pounds. Mussel, lugworms working best there. Sand crabs are spotty. The bite in the rocks has also been good. And uh, it's a nice variety, calico bass, sand bass, cabazon, yellowfin, croaker, sargo, grass rockfish, the whole deal. Just fishing in Redondo reported more good Corvina action along Torrance, Manhattan, Hermosa. Fresh mussels been the ticket there. Again, the sand crab's a little tough to find. Another striped bass uh, was taken off Hermosa there. The Bernita have showed up big time off the pier, and they were getting them in the harbor there, and that's another traditional fall thing, and look for that bite to just get better. Big Fish and Seal Beach reported striped bass are back at that Alamitos jetty. A couple of big schools have been working bait off the jetty there, and these are quality fish, 8 to 12-pound striped bass. The guys are throwing crocodiles. Castmasters, another good choice I like is a striker bomb, which is like a hair jig with a little single tail grub in the back. And what you're looking for is distance, you know, because you're chasing these bird schools. You want to get a good long cast, long rod, and uh, watch the birds, you know, that's the whole ticket. And then you dial in. And it's been an evening bite, but they're starting to see more and more fish in the morning. Corbina have also been everywhere along this stretch with anglers reporting fish bumping into the ankle. Lots of fish in the one to three pound class. Some kickers pushing four. Bonita, firecracker, yellowtail off the Seal Beach Pier there. Hogan's reported good spots in Sargo Bite off San Clemente Pier. Real nice quality fish, fresh mussel, bloodworms, 
Spotfin to five, Sargo to three. Excellent Corbina bite all through this area there, Capo Bay. Early and late <clears throat> has been best just to avoid the beach crowd. Man, there is the- so much good surf fishing that going on out there, Gundy, man. Unbelievable. And stripers and the thing, man. It's always so good to hear hear your voice and hear what's going on out there. And appreciate that great beach report. And All we'll right, talk Pete. to you next we'll week. We'll catch you next week. All right. Gundy. Thanks, Gundy. Appreciate that call. All right. Let's jump dra- back into the jam-packed phone calls. Talk to Michael. Called us from San Diego this morning. Good morning, Michael. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Morning. What's up? Hey, I had a question and, and a comment. Let's start the comment first. I know a lot of guys call in with, like, a all-around inexpensive rod and reel setup. We just recently bought my dad, uh, upgraded him from his old Pen 500 to a 8-foot Talus, medium heavy with a Torium HD20. That thing is a fishing machine. Great backbone, great casting, great setup, and not too expensive. But my question is, actually, I've been doing a lot of day and a half trips lately, and I know with the fluorocarbon, you know, we use a five, six foot leader, and throughout the day you're cutting, cutting. What's the minimum length you should probably start thinking about replacing your leader and putting a new one on there? Directly to the Spectra. Exactly. I would say what, Rick, if you get down there lower than three, four feet, it's probably time to, to tie a new one. You use that, uh, use that Bob Sands knot, we call it, or, or any one of those comparable knots. It, it doesn't take John any time. Yeah, the John, John Collins. It doesn't take any time to tie a new one on there. You know, yeah. take three a, or take four a minute. It's probably kind of a, a good, yeah. Good start yeah you, over. Get, you get lower than that. Just, just take that five minutes to whip out a new one, put another 15 feet on there, and, and, and away you go. There you go. Oh, back right. down. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right, hey, when we come back, we got more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California Sport Fishing Voice on the Mighty 1090. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. For East Cape fishing, Jen Ren is known as the best. This is Mark Rayer. Great service, top quality equipment, including all accurate reels, Calstar rods, and Cibran electronics, has put my immaculately maintained twin engine cruisers in a class of their own. For memories of a lifetime, just bring your hat and sunglasses, and we'll provide a fishing experience that will exceed your expectations. Our calendar's filling fast, so don't miss out. For packages, two live webcams, a weekly fishery report, and more, check out TeamGenRen.com. We pick up at all East Cape Cape Resorts, so let's go fishing. XSRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Oh, right. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish-finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest 
largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish. Burn less fuel. Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. Now is the time to book your long-range trips and charters, plus half-day trips aboard the Dolphin. Go to Fisherman'sLanding.com and see trip availability and even book your trip online. Stop by or call Fisherman's Landing in San Diego and book now at Fisherman'sLanding.com. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The Offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360-degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military-grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. <laughs> 